So I've got my Z, Z1, and my Z takeaway, Z1. So now let's think about where the arguments are in this diagram, right? What is, at least on the diagram as I have it, what is arg Z minus Z1? Or maybe I should say, where is arg Z minus Z1? Because I'm still thinking in terms of the origin, right? You go from the origin, all right? You take the positive real axis, and then up you go. There's the angle. You okay with that? That's the argument of Z minus Z1. Now the question then becomes, where else is that angle? Where else is the angle? Well, I'm going to take advantage of um, our parallelogram again, right? I'm going to put up this side over here. I don't really need this side, but it's my angle for the sake of completeness. Okay. Now remember, this green angle, arg of Z minus Z1, is measured from a horizontal. It's measured, measured from the positive real axis. So I kind of need another positive real axis, but I'm shifting my point of reference. Okay? Shifting my point of reference. So therefore, if I put in a positive real axis that comes, as it were, off of Z1, that's where my new measurement point is. Okay? Do you see, based on like this line and this line are parallel, because it's a parallelogram, right? <coughs> parallelogram? So here, here, yeah? And then you've got a, a line that's parallel here and parallel here. So where else is the angle? Answer, surely it's here. Do you see it? If my, if my lines are reasonable in straightness, okay? So if I've got the same argument down here, arg z minus z1, that's from O and the positive real axis up to z minus z1. Let me get that first definition. So I guess the way I would say it is, the angle is measured at that point, but it's from the positive real axis. Can you go with that? But this guy in blue here, which is the same magnitude, uh, or the same size I should say, that argument is the same angle there, has nothing to do with the origin, right? How would you word it? What angle is it? Angle between two lines. It's the angle measured at Z1, right, Z1, and where is its starting point? Well, it's not the positive real axis anymore, because that's all the way down here, but it's a vector, <laughs> it's the free vector of the positive real axis. Do you see the positive real axis is a position vector, right? It's just starting from O and then off it goes, right? So what you've got is an equivalent free vector just moved up to your new point of reference, and that's where you measure from. Measured from I don't really need to say it's from Z1 because I just said it's from Z1. Okay? This green one is um thinking about Z take away Z1 as a point over there. And this blue one is actually thinking about Z. That's where it's actually looking. With a new point of reference. Okay? So now if I asked you, just like I did before, what if I said, what is the locus of points such that the argument of that point, take away z1, is equal to pi on 2? Hmm. What I want is this way of thinking, right? z1's my new point of reference, and when I measure from the horizontal, right, from the positive real axis, up to whichever complex numbers you want, that said, I want to get pi on 2 radians. It's 90 degrees, right? I can draw that set. Here's a point. That'll give me a right angle, yeah? Here's another point. That'll still give me the right angle. In fact, anywhere upwards from here will give me that angle. Does that make sense? Ah, uh, now, yeah, we'll, I'll get to that in a second. So you can see any of these points, right? Z1's my new point of reference. Yeah. Z1's my new point of reference. So therefore, any of these points up here will measure pi on 2 when I think about their argument. Okay? So, like, that angle is going to be, the whole angle is going to be Z1 minus Z1. Correct. That's exactly right. Okay? So all of these points 
have an argument of pi on 2 yeah. measured from z1. Okay. Okay? Now, the question becomes, what about z1? What about z1? Now, we don't have to guess, actually. We don't have to guess. Because if I test out z1, yeah, when I test out z equals z1, what I find is, okay, it's the argument of z1. Take away z1, which is the argument at the origin, which is undefined, right? So therefore, z1 itself is not included in the locus. So okay. it's like z1's the party group. Kind of, yeah. Well, the origin is the, yeah. Well, z1's the new point of reference, right? We're shifting the point of reference, so therefore, he becomes the new origin, as it were. Okay. So, yes. if you were to like, um, like think about it in, in the other way, where um, you had z minus z1, yep. right, how would you draw the locus of points? With great difficulty. <laughs> because like, if you only considered z minus yep. z1, right, yes. then it would obviously be yep. slightly okay, I'll, I'll tell you how you need to do it. You would think, okay, I've got, I've got a point z1, right? Yep. When I subtract z1, that's going this direction, right? So therefore Z is actually in the opposite direction. Like the actual Z, I've got to sort of reverse engineer it as it were, okay? So what I would do is I would say, oh, okay, well, all the arguments pi on two are up here, right? So then you would take every single one of these points and you would translate it in reverse. So you would add Z1 to it, which would take you over there and then over there and then over there, right? Which would give you all of these points. 